Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. <clears throat> it's now Mom from DC Camp back again with another video, a short one. Um, going into the excess, excessive greed of these wicked Edomites, these so called white people, all right, as a nation. <clears throat> all right, and it warns us several scriptures about this covetous man and how he is. All right, so we're going to go into, uh, this is again uh, another video from Mental Nation, this uh, Ishmaelite here. He'd be going in <laughs> on the west. Uh, hey, so let's uh, get to it. They develop disproportionately uh, in the area of brutality. They place a great deal of importance and value in violence as a kind of virtue. They think that they can claim the moral high ground basically by throwing someone off of a cliff. So this is just a characteristic that they have. They're violent. And this again, in my opinion, most likely originates uh, in their rather squalid, harsh conditions. Their so-called uh, civilization emerged from harsh conditions. I mean, Europe is cold. The climate is harsh. There's scarce natural resources. Historically, only about a quarter of the terrain in Europe uh, was arable land. Let's see, here's the thing. They did not originate in what is now called Europe. No, they dwelt in the Western Asia, what is more commonly called today the Middle East. All right. Um, <clears throat> they were driven, all right, where they are today because of their ways. When you go into Job 30, it gives you a breakdown. All right, once again, these are the scriptures, not the um, Quran. A very cheap imitation of the scriptures. All right, but this is um, let me get a scripture right off the bat here, because what he said as far as him being violent, hell yeah. All right, this is um, that's what they they've known for. All right, we're not going to give them any excuse about their. You know, going into that nature versus nurture argument. They're just wicked. This is uh, Psalms chapter 5, verse 6. Thou shalt destroy them. Again, let's go to the top. All right. This is the chief musician upon Niholoth, a psalm of David. David had a lot of experience dealing with these Edomites. He hated them, and rightfully so. This is Psalms... Uh, chapter 5 verse 6 once again uh, let's see well I do have strong let's see let me do this there we go that's what I'm looking for alright thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing what is leasing let's go to strong's H 3577 another trait of theirs falsehood untruth Deceitful, false, a liar, a lie. They are very skillful at this. Another part of their blessing, you know who you're dealing with. All right. The Most High Yahweh will abhor, let's point to that word, all right, to loathe. All right. That is morally detest. This is what we're supposed to act the attitude we're supposed to have how to deal with these people even though we have to deal with them because remember the part of the curses all right Deuteronomy 28 and 48 we have to go to this piece of shit for want of all things doesn't mean you have to like them doesn't mean you have to hee hee ha ha and rub elbows and shoulders with them no you do your business what's that saying uh, you serve your enemy with a, a long handled ladle you know in other words, you, yeah, you got to deal with them, but you keep your distance. All right, that's hey. The majority of Jake never. <laughs> Whew. It says uh, the Most High Yahweh will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. So he will abhor, he will detest, morally detest, loathe the bloody and deceitful man. That's who we're dealing with. All right, let's go back to the video. Whoops. 
So these are people who were struggling to survive. They had to battle for resources. You know, the modern stereotype of Westerners as being soft and pampered and prosperous and so on. This is truly a modern concept because that has not at all been their history. Material resources became intensely important to them. And whatever means expedited the acquisition uh, of resources, by definition, that was good and admirable. And as I've talked about, the Europeans uh, did not have in their various pagan belief systems any guidance uh, that could enable them to cope with the relative de uh, deprivation of their societies. We know that they prioritized the successful acquisition of material resources. And this is the highest good for them. So it doesn't matter. And that's why the period between <clears throat> 14, well, even a little bit before then, but because you got to understand there was this transition period. We were coming down, they were coming up. After that thousand years of being so very low, just look up the wild man of, of Europe. All right, um, Job 30, once again, uh, they were viler than the earth. They still are. All right, um, these are the basest of men indeed. All right, the lowest of the low. And another aspect or something else you have to consider with these people are their, as part of their nature, is to assume others' identity. Hmm. Yeah. In fact, let's go into Job. Yeah. Job 30. Because a lot of you don't, you know, and that's what we do here. That's all right. This is Job chapter 30. He says, But now they that are younger than I have me in derision because at this point Job was brought low you know he <laughs> uh, lost everything you know and these people are making mockery of him and his condition whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock what is another thing these so called white people are known to to be involved in Yea, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want and famine they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots to their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, clue, and in caves of the earth and in the rocks. Among the bushes they bray. What is to bray? And that is uh, Nahach, Nahach, to bray as an ass, scream from hunger, bray. What's one of the, when you assume, when you picture a caveman, what are the, one of the things that you see them doing, uh, hopping around on all fours? <laughs> All right. Among the bushes they bray, under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. Base men, let's see. All right. Uh, Balia, failure. That is nothing or destruction, all right, without, not yet, because not, as long as, let's see, corruption, uh, for lack of, let's see what the 80, let's see, base, <laughs> shame, all right. And now am I their song, yea, I am their byword. They abhor me, they flee far from me, and spare not to spit in my face. All right, because he hath loosed my cord and afflicted me, they have also let loose the bridle before me. All right. Yeah. It goes on, but that's the point. And they enjoy, speaking of that, 
the last part of that. That's what they enjoy doing to, to Jake. Oh, they love the condition that we're in. Trust me. They don't want to see us. All the history, especially when it comes to this country, I keep bringing it up because it needs to be continually brought up, all right, because Jake just don't get it. Every time we've tried to accomplish something for ourselves, they've always sabotaged it. This is their history. All right, because when you go to the history between our people and theirs, when you think of Haman, all right, and Esther, all right, it's just <laughs> this is spiritual warfare between the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And their seed descending from Jacob's brother Esau. They've always, when we're talking about being covetous, that's what they've always coveted. They want that birthright back. Read Genesis 25th chapter. That's what this is all about. All right, so let's continue. Matter uh, for them, it doesn't matter to them that this acquisition is achieved by means of savage oppression. If it's, if it's achieved by deceit or treachery or theft, if violence or cunning can succeed, then success is all that matters. If violence and cunning succeed, then it also necessarily means in their minds that peacefulness and honesty are impractical virtues. And it That's why <laughs> this is going to happen. See how all this matches up? Let's go back to uh, King. Let's see. This is what, <laughs> this is beautiful, man. This is beautiful. This is Sirach. 10th chapter, 8th verse. All right. We could start at the top, but I'm just going to go straight to the point. Start at 8. It says, well, actually 7. Pride is hateful before the Most High, and man, and by both doth one commit iniquity. All right. And at the root of these devils is their pride. All right. <laughs> the proudest people on this earth are the so-called white man. Verse 8, because of unrighteous dealings, uh -huh, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. See, what he's done since, remember I mentioned Columbus 1492, that period between then and the eve of the civil U.S. Civil War, 1860, all right, that was what he was about. Still is but I'm talking about the bulk of it, the the atrocities that were committed, just taking people's shit, not giving a fuck. That transference of wealth from Jake to them, all right? And the excuses at that time, well, you know, you had, um, was, you know, we did it for religious reasons, economic, wanting all the gold, the, the land, the silver, whatever have you. And by the eve of the Civil War, the bulk of that was completed. And then, well, what's their excuse now? Why are they, why is the white man so, so mighty? Now they started, you know, the chest all out. And then here comes this book by, uh, you know, evolution. You know, and in it, there's this description of, well, it's not a tree greater than a single blade of grass, something to that effect. So, well, it must be that they're in this lower state, of course, discounting everything that they have done to our people. Well, they must be in this condition because it's, it's biology. <laughs> this is who you're dealing with. You expect to get some kind of relief, some type of justice from a piece of shit like this? I got to look at you side-eyed then. All right, back to the video. An impractical virtue uh, is the same thing as a vice in their mind. In other words, if it prevents you from acquiring resources, then it is uh, categorically inferior and wrong. And that will apply to any uh, real civilized values whether it's peacefulness or honesty or wisdom or restraint or uh, sacrifice or compassion or honor or what have you. None of these uh, virtues deserve respect in their eyes. 
if they hinder you from conquest and pillage. This attitude would be first. Also, Wisdom of Solomon, second chapter. All right, I believe it's verse either is it 10 or 11. About out, let's just get it. Uh, basically, it's saying uh, might is right. Uh, let's go. It's wisdom 2. All right, and they're dealing with Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, the Mashiach. Let's see. Here it is. Start at 7. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and anointments, and let no flower of the spring pass by us, because one of the mottos of the when they call themselves, <laughs> they assume that mantle also, is Vikings, is what? Live for today. All right. Eight, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion and our lot is this. All their monuments, etc., which are going to be done away with. Ten, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Eleven, let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth it. It's not just what he's... <laughs> Further, uh, cemented by the fact that uh, their approach enables you to conquer and pillage genuinely superior cultures and civilizations who adhere to those so-called impractical virtues. If you were truly better than us, in other words, we wouldn't have your stuff. We wouldn't be able to take all your things. We wouldn't be able to take you over. If your civilization was actually superior, then we wouldn't be able to conquer you. That's, that's the thinking. how they look at it. That's the thinking and that's the message. Their message is, your civilization is undeveloped because we were able to conquer you. And because we were able to conquer you, we are superior. But don't worry. Uh, we're here to civilize you now. They have an actual disdain for, 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 for any values, for any morals, for any principles that impede in any way material acquisition. You can translate material acquisition to, the, in modern parlance, to productivity. So anything that impedes so-called productivity is belittled or outright despised. Even if that is uh, conscience, even if it's upholding trust, even if it's health, even if it's parenthood for that matter. They have to make you think uh, that any other system of prioritization is our now you begin to understand <laughs> the how and the why behind all these fucked up laws and legislations that are coming down all right they're revealing their true nature archaic and obsolete and backwards that is incompatible with so-called modernity and modernity when they say it uh, just means sociopathic materialism which treats moral values and principles as decorative extras yep. that should never interfere with so-called productivity their whole so-called civilization developed and has been driven by an obsession with material deprivation which evolved into a, a sanctification of anyone who successfully acquired abundant material goods and resources whoever has amassed wealth those people are considered to be the most admired the most respected the most important in short, a strict adherence to the golden rule. He who has the gold rules. Simple as that. The most uh, authoritative, the most honorable, the wisest people in society. And thus, the whole uh, system of society that they designed is designed to serve those people and to idolize them and glorify them and pay homage to them. From the time of the European warlords to the time of the European feudal lords to, to now and the lords of business and capital. That's why, for instance, their proof that an economy is healthy and successful uh, is that uh, the economy has produced X number of billionaires. Wealth is the basis of authority. That's how these people think. They want to ensure that everyone thinks uh, that moral values and principles are negotiable and that ultimately they're disposable. Because the only thing that ultimately matters is material success at any cost. It's a marauder mentality. If we abandon all of the traits and the characteristics of our civilization that make it superior, then we will become actually inferior because we will have joined a game in which they already excel. The game of violence and ruthless materialism. Is now do you begin to understand why this fight has been so successful by keeping it spiritual? 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. Let's get that real quick. 
this is why because like he just said if you're trying to take them on head on you're in their domain now that's sure suicide this is second corinthians 10 and uh, 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal what is carnal let's go back i gotta get the strongs again all right carnal strongs g come on now uh 45 59 sarkikos sarkikos pertaining to flesh all right bodily temporal there's scriptures about that um, or by implication animal unregenerate fleshly all right but mighty through Yahweh by Shimei HaOshah to the pulling down of stronghold what's those strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh by Shimei HaOshah and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. All right. That's why they're trying to come at us or still look at it. Now the new thing is trying to get us to appear as anti sim All right. Because <laughs> we didn't fall into that, that trap of being carnal. You don't see any of us with AR 15s or whatever at the camp. All right. Why? Psalms 34 and 7. All right. It's like if an athlete of one sport uh, agrees to compete with an athlete of another sport in that other athlete's sport. It's like if a golfer or, or, or a chess champion agrees to compete in a boxing match with a boxer. It's a rigged competition simply due to the incompatibility of the skill sets. And that's the case of the Muslims and people in the Global South generally who have more mature, more evolved cultures and civilizations if they agree to play the barbarian game of the West. This is a case of uh, you accepting that the emperor's clothes are, the, are actually the most stylish and most luxurious clothes that you can wear. And so you agree to strip away everything that actually makes you uh, elegant and dignified and protected from the elements and you, and you want to look like the emperor. And at the end of that game, uh, it won't be that the emperor has no clothes. It will be that the emperor has your clothes, even if they don't fit him. And you'll be left there standing naked like a fool. At which point, the emperor will tell you uh, that you're a naked heathen, and he'll teach you how to dress. That's the game. And that, by and large, what he has done when we go to Habakkuk, all right, all these people are so so happy to jump um, in bed with this piece of shit and now they didn't caught whatever they caught now they're angry because they see all right now they're suffering the consequences of their actions all right they embraced democracy and even wore the same clothes and as he just said, they, they ended up losing themselves, all right? And then this bastard, he ends up trying to, you know, as it says, all right? He appears as an angel of light, all right? It says, uh, let's see, Habakkuk 2 and 15, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. All right, let's go into that. Let's see. Uh, Strong's. H8248, Shukwa, Shukwa, that is to irrigate or furnish a potion to uh, cause to drink, drown, moisten water. Uh, let's see, it says, hold on. Uh, so drink, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it down here. All right, let's see. Where else? Let's see, H7937. To become tipsy, and a lot of them did indeed. With that democracy, they got drunk off the philosophies and doctrines of the West. Democracy. To become tipsy, uh, in a qualified sense, to satiate with a stimulating drink or influence. To be filled with drink. All right. <laughs> so there you have it. All right. And that's what he did. And then, well, we'll just keep reading. Uh, 
Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. All right? Thou art filled with shame for glory, which is happening there. You just devil's being exposed, right? Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Most High Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. Everybody's got stories now. Not just stories, but facts how this devil has, or what they have done to them. All right? It's not that everybody just hates this devil just ah, nah, we, we, because you're so right no I keep saying in order to understand America truly you have to follow their foreign diplomacy the things that they have done to destabilize countries and put their puppets in all for the sake of what he's saying telling you here to acquire resources all right and other kinds of wealth that's what he's done this is why people hate I mean despise this motherfucker and that's scripture that's prophecy all right one of which is just what I just read you Habakkuk 2 and 16 now that shame Isaiah 47 chapter is another one those things that you used to do when those demons were working with you, ain't working no more. All right, because it's time for uh, Second Thessalonians, second chapter. All right. That they want us to play. And that's it. All right. So, um, yeah. <laughs> this is the case. <laughs> there it is in a nutshell. All right. This piece of shit is on his way out, and it, he's trying to take any and everybody he can with him on his way out. You have to understand that. There is no repentance, all right, to these Edomites. That's Hebrews for you Testament people, Hebrews 12, verses 16 and 17. There's no repentance, so that knocks that God loves everybody crap, all right, out the park. Obliterates it. Why? Because you never truly learned the scriptures. You learn what this devil wanted you to learn. And as you find out with most Christians, that's next to nothing. Like I said, these places that you go to on Sundays or just <laughs> you just go to hear a motivational speaking, that's all. So you in order for you to go along to get along. All right, so uh, that's about it. Um, straight to the point. Uh, again, we're in this moment now where all is being revealed. And this devil can't stand it. So he's trying to speed things up in order for him to establish that new world order. And especially with this digital currency, the CBDC. Once that's established, it's going to be a whole new world. All right. And not for the better either. Uh, so with that, once again, I hope whoever views this is edified, as always. And uh, once again, I'd like to stress the importance, all right, of uh, prayer and fasting. So with that, until the next video, shalom.